Investors, man oh man, do I have insanely exciting news for you all. I brought in over $100 in passive income during the month of February. But oh, wait, isn't that not that much? And you're right, it's not, especially when last year I averaged over $137 per month in dividend income. So what's the deal? Well, it is in fact that this is no longer just an average, it is my new monthly dividend income reality as my dividend snowball rolls right along. Now, if you're brand new here, my name is Ari. I'm your value and dividend investor here on YouTube, sharing my journey with you all, as well as economic insights, stock ideas, and from time to time, interviewing other masters of the market. But as for today's video, we're gonna have a moment just to Breathe, back away from all the negativity of the negative news headlines as we're gonna be talking strictly about my portfolio with a quick update followed by just how much dividend income I brought in from seven dividend stocks during the month of February. Before we dive in, give that thumbs up button some love and be sure to subscribe to the channel to be on this journey with me. Now investors, let's dive right in. So as mentioned, today's video is all about my portfolio. And as of today, like the market, it is down by a couple thousand dollars here, sitting at $106,976 after a lot of unfavorable economic data sets, rising bond yields, hawkishness from the Federal Reserve, and nil guidance from top retailers who just reported earnings. But if you're subscribed to the channel, well, none of this volatility should have been surprising to you given we talk about it from video to video. But I wanna table all the negativity today and just talk about my dividend income that I received during the month of February, which I hope inspires you and just shows you through to investing that it's simple as long as you have a plan and stick to it through the ups and downs of all the market turbulence. Now, all in all, I received seven different dividend paychecks, which we're about to run through. But before we do, if you are brand new here, you're here for the first time, this is a dividend income reveal video, and let me catch you up to speed about how we do things here on my channel, because I'm not only gonna disclose which company paid me out a dividend and how much they paid me, but I'm actually gonna go a bit into detail with a breakdown, whether that's more about the company itself or moreover, if it's right for your investment as we speak. Then come the end of the video, we're gonna dive into the dividend tracker for the total and overview of my dividend snowball. Now I do that because I find many channels who just say X stock paid me a dividend and I received a Y amount. It's not only useless for you, but it's boring for us creators. And with that now all out of the way, we have seven dividend stocks to break down. So let's rewind back to February 1st where we had two out of the seven dividend paychecks cash the first of which came in from the world's largest telecommunications company, at least by revenue, which is AT&T, ticker symbol T. Now, I will be upfront and honest, I have zero intentions of buying more shares worth of this telecom powerhouse. And even though I do see potential here as AT&T amps up marketing efforts and continues to configure this 5G network to remain competitive with Verizon and T-Mobile, I really feel selling AT&T at the right time and allocating the capital elsewhere will be more lucrative of an investment move. However, that does not mean it is necessarily a terrible investment opportunity for long-term investors or those looking for lower growth, more reliable dividend income stocks. As this $133 billion market capitalized telecom leader continues to progress its industry. And it is noteworthy to see hedge funds pouring money into AT&T at this time, as well as analysts also foreseeing some upside in due time with the share price rising to $21.82 per share, which is nearly 17% worth of upside. But as for me at this time, I'm gonna stick with my 12 shares, which allowed me to receive $3.58 given their dividend yield is sitting at 5.83%. Now later that day, a paycheck from Darden Restaurants, ticker symbol DRI, hit my account. And I have to say that this is a dividend stock that is hardly spoken about and therefore not getting the attention that I think it deserves from dividend investors as Darden is a multi-brand restaurant operator operating some of the most popular restaurant chains across the United States from the Olive Garden to Longhorn Steakhouse and the Poshier Eddie V's to the Capitol Grill. That, thanks to such popular names, has become an industry leader with a $17.4 billion market capitalization. Now, amidst all these economically trying times, sure, consumers out there may not be dining out as much, which is why there has been some near-term volatility with the share price sliding nominally to $143 just within the past few days and a P-E ratio below 20 at 19.7. But in due time, are Olive Garden breadsticks really going anywhere? Anyone? Anyone? No. 
That's what I'm also thinking as well. So with some hedge funds starting new positions with Darden and analysts forecasting upside of over 8% to $155.85 per share, I will only continue to buy more shares of Darden should it continue to slide to lower lows while sitting tight with my five shares, which allowed me to receive $6.43 given their dividend yields coming in at 3.31%. Moving right along to the 15th of the month, we had our real estate payday where two REITs shelled out their dividends with the first of the two being Stag Industrial, ticker symbol STAG, which has been a position that I have been scaling when I can, given I feel its future has explosive potential as it operates industrial properties like warehouses and fulfillment centers for some big name logistics companies, whether it's Amazon, FedEx, or XPO Logistics. And for only being founded in 2010, it's amassed a portfolio of 562 buildings across 41 states. Now that's not too shabby, which sparked its market capitalization to grow to over $6 billion. Now, in terms of its share price, it is attractively in the red zone here at nearly $33 per share, whereas it was once trading for nearly $50 for the pandemic, which is why we're seeing smart money take an interest in STAG, as well as analysts forecasting more upside with a share price rising to $38 per share. But as for me, I currently own 29 shares, which allowed me to cash in for $3.64 worth of a paycheck, given their dividend yield is sitting at 4.34%. And as for my second monthly paying read, it's every dividend investor's read of choice, Realty Income, ticker symbol O, with their single tenant commercial property portfolio comprising of over 12,000 properties, spanning over all 50 states and into Puerto Rico, the United Kingdom, and Spain, delivering through on reliability with over 1,240 clients like 7-Eleven and Walmart to Home Depot and FedEx. Now their market capitalization, it's coming in just under $40 billion. Yet I'm not currently a buyer until that share price sinks below $58 per share, but hedge funds have certainly found realty income attractive and analysts also see plenty of upside to come with a share price rising to over $70 per share, which is almost 10% worth of upside, which is also not too shabby here either, especially with real estate being a great hedge against inflation. But I will not buy until I see a share price I think is worth it. Therefore, I'm just gonna continue to enjoy my dividends from owning 103 shares, which allowed me to receive $25.73, thanks to Realty Income's dividend yield coming in at 4.58%. As for this next dividend paycheck, we're gonna dive into the largest individual stock position in my portfolio with Apple, ticker symbol AAPL, which honestly, need I even say anything at all when it comes to Apple? Well, I think if anything, it's worth talking about Apple's product pipeline that only continues to revolutionize the world as we know it. And no, I'm not talking about iPhone because that is old news that just remains as lucrative as ever, which reminds me, if you or anyone you know is suffering from green bubble tech syndrome, don't wait, act now for just $429. You can save a life by gifting an iPhone SE. No, but seriously, let's dive into their product pipeline because I'm insanely excited to talk about their AR headset to hit the market, which rumor has it is not only gonna be for gaming, but will also help people with eye diseases, or how about their no prick blood glucose tracking technology, and finally, while I believe we still have some time to go, it's their Apple car that truly may shock the world and in my opinion, be a major competitor to Musk and the Tesla gang, which is why I'm always scoring more shares of this $2.3 trillion market capitalized tech titan, especially when it slides into red territory, trading for a current share price of $145 per share, which is not necessarily a buy-in price for me, but I will always share to keep your eyes on it, as smart money always does, with analysts also equally as excited with a plenty of upside predicted. Matter of fact, nearly 20% worth of it coming up to a share price of $172.91 per share. But as for me, I'm holding 127 shares, which allowed me to receive $29.32, given their dividend yield is sitting at 0.61%. And finally, Starbucks, ticker symbol SBUX, the world's most beloved coffee house chain that is truly amassed in empire of sorts with over 33,000 locations around the world in 80 countries with over 15,000 of those locations in the United States for all the basic frappe, mocha, choca, sugar, loca lovers out there. You know who I'm talking about. And if that's you, well, cheers because these Starbucks dividends are just unexpressible. As for Starbucks investment, we're talking about a $116 billion market capitalized coffee leader but don't think it's necessarily at a right buy-in right now, trading for just over $100 per share with P ratio coming in at 35.2. 
but analysts may argue it is worth it for the upside with a share price of $116.61 per share expected while hedge funds proceed to pour millions into the position. I will, however, just continue to hold my 20 shares, which allowed me to receive $10.74 thanks to all you sugar addicts out there and Starbucks' dividend coming in at 1.96%. Now, before I reveal my monthly dividend total, I have a dividend paycheck that came in for just having cash on the sidelines with a settlement fund, which totaled $28.59, bringing my grand total on the month to a brand new record high of $108.03, which is huge considering we're not only up significantly from this time last month, but nearly doubled the income from this time last year and remain pacing for my goal of hitting over $3,000 in passive income this year come December. And there you have it, investors, the power and magic of dividend growth investing seven dividend paychecks later. But now I have to ask, how much did you bring in this February? What were some of your highest paying dividend stocks this month? And which positions are you most focused on scaling at this point in time? Let me know by dropping your thoughts in a comment down below. And before you get going, be sure to check out my latest interview with Michael Gray, who is one of Fidelity's mutual fund and ETF experts, managing over $10 billion before he left to start Gray Capital Management. The link to that video will be pinned in my comment. And with that, until next time, I'll see you all in my next video.